6 News. This is Feel Good Friday. I am going to take ownership of this, and if it's not done right, I'm going to do it over and over again until I get it done right. <laughs> More families in our community than you can imagine struggle with transportation. They don't have a car, or maybe they have one car and one parent needs to take it to work. Thanks for joining us on this Feel Good Friday. I'm Siobhan Klepper. We get the good news going this evening with a very happy update on a local girl I had the pleasure of meeting six years ago. She was in the fight of her life battling leukemia. Today she's in remission, but it's not just the doctors and healthcare professionals getting credit for helping her heal. It's some key volunteers as well who simply offered her a ride. Hi. This is Mary Jane when we first met back in 2018. At just three years old, she needed to travel two to three times a week to get to and from doctor's appointments as she fought leukemia. For her family, all of those appointments would have been extremely tough to make if not for the volunteers at the Davies Project. <laughs> Who've been knocking on doors offering seriously ill children free rides back and forth to medical appointments for about 10 years now. They offer the same service for pregnant women needing rides to prenatal appointments as well. More families in our community than you can imagine struggle with transportation. They don't have a car or maybe they have one car and one parent needs to take it to work. 70% of the children who rely on the specialty clinics are on Medicaid. They have been missing 60% of their outpatient appointments. When you think about the ramifications of that, it, it's Thankfully, and thanks in part to the Davies Project, it's Mary Jane who now has that bright future. That was the most important thing for me was to make sure she made all of her appointments. I don't think we ever miss in all these years, in seven years, we have not missed one appointment. Here she is today at 10 years old with her cancer in remission, an active, energetic girl with that same contagious smile. My body feels pretty good. I, it hurts sometimes and like when I sometimes like if I get like bruises it will hurt. She's doing really well. She's doing really well. Even today, Mary Jane and her family still call on Davies Project drivers to get her to different appointments, thankfully now few and far between. But that's not the case for plenty of other families in mid-Michigan in dire need of these drivers. And because of that, the Davies is urgently looking for volunteers. There's a high demand for what we provide here, so we are on the hunt to find as many compassionate and people-driven people who are willing to just help us get, keep this thing going. Every ride matters. Every ride makes a huge difference in a family's life, and it contributes to our community. Our community is getting strengthened by having these families cared for. We are driving upwards of 330 or so drives a month. There's about 30 of us active in any given time. We have a group of about 60 total, but they're sometimes out of town and otherwise. But if we could increase that by 10 or 15. Increase the volunteers to increase the impact, to increase the likelihood of hope and health for more children like Mary Jane. They were always there always and the drivers are amazing they're just they're beautiful people aren't they they're just wonderful thank you for helping us through all my cancer treatments and thank you for being so nice and giving me all the treats and books <laughs> Well, if you're interested in volunteering as a Davies Project driver, please visit the Scene on 6 section of our website to get more information. That's WLNS.com. Another Halloween is in the books and a child trick-or-treating in England has been working with her neighbors to make the spooky holiday a great one for everyone. Six-year-old Ada Hawks is deaf and her parents say in the past her disability has made Halloween stressful and sometimes frightening for her, so they usually avoided it. But then they had an idea to teach their neighbors British Sign Language. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors practiced how to sign trick or treat and happy Halloween all week in anticipation for Halloween this year. And these are Ada's first conversations with people who live on her street and it marks a new experience for all of them. 
Wonderful. And staying with the fall fun, but with a cause, the Country Mill in Charlotte is asking the public to come pick a peck for people. From 1 to 4 p.m. this Sunday, you're invited to go to the Country Mill and pick a bag of apples. Those apples will then be donated to food banks for people in need. The owners say about 10,000 pounds of apples are gathered this way every single year. And if you participate, you can get a free hayride or corn maze ticket. In Utica, a first time mom went into labor and as dad was racing them to the hospital, they got pulled over. But our ABC affiliate in Detroit reports instead of writing a ticket, Officer Liz DeMink jumped back into her cruiser and gave them a police escort complete with lights and siren. The officer has two kids of her own and says she knew exactly what the couple was going through and little baby Henry is doing just fine. Speaking of babies, these new arrivals in the U of M Health Sparrow Neonatal Intensive Care Unit celebrated Halloween this year with some very cute costumes. They were handmade by the NICU team and then shared on the hospital's social media. All oh, very cute. And every Halloween, people look forward to seeing these costumes as well. I know I do. This is model Heidi Klum's annual Halloween party where they host. It's, it's always an elaborate costume that Heidi does. This year, she and her husband each dressed as the famous Hollywood alien E.T., with Klum representing the dressed up version from a scene in the Steven Spielberg film. And then other celebrities also wore costumes ranging from the usual to the unusual. And we have a birthday to announce. The iconic Japanese character Hello Kitty turns 50 years old today. The little white cat first appeared in 1974, and her backstory says she's a young girl who lives in family. She started out as a cartoon character appearing on Merchant and has grown into a brand empire with TV shows, films, video games, and even her own album. Fans celebrated the occasion at the Hello Kitty Land theme park. Kendall, Hello Kitty, you're familiar, obviously? Yes, I am. Yeah. And 50 years young, she hasn't looked like she's even <laughs> aged a day. I know. I don't know much about, I know the name Hello Kitty, yeah. but that's as far as it goes. Like, I just, I don't know what it's about. I just know that it exists, I guess. You know? I have just a very vague memory of, you know, watching the cartoons as oh, I was yeah. younger. But, I mean, getting the backpack and stuff like that oh. was probably the furthest I went. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, changes in the forecast, Kendall. Yeah, and we kind of saw that throughout the day today. Noticed it was a lot chillier <laughs> compared to yesterday, mm -hmm. but we get more sunshine as we at least start the weekend. All right, your full forecast right after the break, and then later on Feel Good Friday,